All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to learn about what this thing is in my hand here. This is actually a fuel injector poppet valve assembly for a CSFI system, a central sequential fuel injection system, also sometimes known as a sequential central port injection system. And these were used on the Vortec V8 engines in the late 90s, and we're going to go through rebuilding one of these. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so... This, these CSFI units, or SCPI, depending on how you want to go, have a bad reputation. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that led up to that. So here is a, uh, a special campaign bulletin for California only, vehicles that had California emissions. And this covered 96 through 2002. And, and basically the problem was that the poppet valves, like I showed you in my, at the beginning of the video, the ends can get clogged up with carbon. And the reason for this particular campaign was that the fuels used in California interact with those poppet systems and those deposits are more prone with those particular fuel uh, blends that are used in California. And that's what led to these things getting a really bad reputation there. GM ended up coming up with this special policy that gave California vehicles only. So you had to have RPO YF5, 10 years of extra warranty. So from the point of this bulletin in 2003, it basically gave you to 2013, and it would cover cleaning these injectors of the SCPI or, S or CSFI. You know, there's two different acronyms GM used for this. Or ultimately, if it was particularly problematic, they would upgrade you to the MFI system, which was the system that comes out after uh, CSFI and replaced it. If you weren't in California, um, there was another bulletin that just covered everybody else with federal. And it came out the same year. And, and basically, again, the problem was deposit buildups. It's basically carbon. Here you see they're using the CSFI acronym. Um, causes the poppet valves at the end of the injectors to either get stuck open or stuck closed. And this causes a variety of problems. And they would tell the dealers not to replace those injectors. Instead, what they want you to do is they have a special cleaner from GM. It's GM's top engine cleaner. And they clean these injectors and bring them back to like new operating condition. But even here, since the problem was particularly problematic with the fuels, if you ended up having that problem happen multiple times, then GM would relent. And if you came back to the dealer with the multiple times of this cleaning not holding and you're still getting the same set of problems, then they would go ahead and give you an upgrade to MFI. So um, the, ultimately, the problem is fuels. And if you have fuels that aren't causing these poppet valves to get deposits, then you're not going to have problems with them getting all clogged up. Now, the system I'm going to show you today has run for almost 400,000 miles and never had any problems. And part of that is what I'm going to show you in these service bulletins. First bulletin is using top-tier gas. Um, this is a current bulletin. GM still pushes this. So top-tier gas is a set of suppliers that have gone above and beyond what the EPA requires. And they have additional and more powerful detergents added to the gasoline. So um, there's, a, there's a version for diesel fuel too, but for this particular talk, we're interested in the version for gasoline. So top tier detergent gasoline, you'll just see this logo. And basically the deal with top tier is if you use it consistently, um, you know, what GM claims and what a lot of the fuel manufacturers claim is these kinds of carbon deposits that you see getting all over this valve in this picture. They're also prone to get on the poppet of the fuel injector. And the point is that if you have this kind of stuff, if you use these kind of fuels, it keeps that stuff from accumulating, these particular carbon deposits. And you can go to uh, www.toptiergas.com and see the companies that do this. For example, the vehicle that this... Uh, this uh, fuel meter body that we're rebuilding today came off of has only used mobile or Exxon gasoline its entire life for 24 years. And those are both top tier brands. If you don't have top tier or even in addition to top tier, GM also put a bulletin out about additives that can go into the fuel to make up for this. So they talk to you about the regular use of a top tier detergent gasoline is recommended in the owner's manual that prevents the buildup of intake valve and fuel injector deposits. But you can also put these additives in, and there's a couple of different sizes. 888-610-13 uh, um, was a 20 ounce, and then there was a 12 ounce with this number here, 8886-1262. These are both discontinued now. Um, there was also a different number for Canada. There are older numbers that go even before this. If you take a look at the data sheet for these particular um, additives that are discontinued, you can see that this was made for GM by Chevron. If we look at the material safety data sheet, and we find out here's the part numbers that we were just seeing on the service bulletin, and we can see a breakdown of the 
chemical composition of these. And if we take a look at the chemical composition of this additive, knowing that it's made by Chevron, well, we can quickly determine that what this is is Tecron. So this is not GM's the only one. You know, I'll, sh I'll flash some pictures on the screen here. Um, Mopar used this, BMW used this, Hyundai used this. I think some other companies all licensed Tecron as an additive because it was just that effective. So even though this is discontinued, I still use Tecron. And this is just, a, you know, the size that would treat an entire truck tank full. 32 ounces would treat about 32 to 34 gallons of gasoline. So that is a way to keep these CSFI systems from giving you problems. Um, after these got discontinued, GM came out with another bulletin that says, hey, you know, same deal, same concern. If you're not using top tier gas, you need to add this additive. And they had a different number. And it's 88865595. And this came out uh, starting in 2017 or so. And this particular additive is not Tecron. So this is made by a company called Excelda Manufacturing. Um, uh, GM's not the only one that went with this particular formula. There's also, um, uh, if you go to the EPA site, these guys also make the, OP, the Mopar version of the fuel injector cleaner. And that's this guy here, right? So 88865595. And so if you were going to treat a truck, you'd probably need, you know, close to three of these. So my take on this is um, for older vehicles, where the engines came out prior to 2015, I just stick to Tecron because that's what they were putting in at the time. I don't know why GM and Mopar and others have switched off Tecron now. Um, but I would use this newer type of treatment on newer types of engines, not older types of engines. So that is the secret and key to keeping these poppet valves um, trouble-free and keeping them clean, is the type of additive and detergent that's in the fuel itself. All right, guys, we've got our fuel meter assembly. Um, we've cleaned it off as best we can. Obviously, this being electronics, we do not dip it in the parts washer. We kind of do everything out externally. Um, as we inspect it, though, we see that we're going to have to replace some of these injectors, so we're just going to end up replacing all of them. You can see here we're missing pieces of the plastic right at the nozzle on this guy on the number four cylinder. We're missing some here on the number eight. Um, we're missing a retainer here on the, the number one cylinder. Here we're missing almost the entire shroud of the end on the number seven cylinder. And I think there was another one of these. Maybe I missed it that's missing one. This is the original 1998 setup. This is a CSFI type setup. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to rebuild this. I, I'm not a fan of the MFI conversion for these OBS trucks, so I'm not gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you how to rebuild the CSFI. I find the CSFI is perfectly fine. This setup in my hand has close to 400,000 miles on it. Trouble free, no misfires. There's a set of things you have to do to get that kind of performance out of this, and I'll talk about that too after we get past some of this uh, rebuilding. And, and by the way, you know, the, the, the tape on here to track these, you don't have to have something like this if you end up cleaning it good enough to be able to read. Um, if, you, if you clean it good enough to read the cylinders, like here we can see there's a two, a four, a three, and a one. If we zoom in, molded right into the plastic here where you can just tell what these are. And then if we flip it around, we can see we've got cylinders seven, five, six, and eight. All right, so keeping this piece of tape on here is only necessary to track what you've got going into the lower intake manifold if you don't clean up both. If you clean up the lower intake manifold, you can also see in the casting it'll identify those pieces. So let's go ahead and get going on with this assembly. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll take with an 8 millimeter. We'll go ahead and take these guys off here. This was just the bolts that we, or the nuts rather, that we left to hold on the retainer of the lines fuel lines themselves that go in. There's also an eight millimeter holding this plate and everything I'm showing here for an eight cylinder is going to be the same for a six cylinder. So this is going to be the same for a five liter V8, for a 5.7 liter V8, and I believe it's a 4.3 liter V6. All Vortec engines. This plate here comes off. And here you can see the individual fuel injector assemblies on the CFI type system. This is the injector sitting in the body. And then you just have the fuel tube and the poppet valve is on the end. And all this piece here is, is a retaining clip. Now, I'll put in the description, you can get just these clips if you want to go that route. And you have to kind of break the original ones off. And then there's an aftermarket type of retaining clip that can go on the end. That's one option, but I'm just going to replace the whole thing because like I said, it's close to 400,000 miles 
and I'd rather just put another set in and I'm confident I will get close to another 400,000 miles out of them and put the truck towards a million miles, right? Uh, this is the fuel regulator. It's held in by a little retainer on the end here. Just kind of folds out like you just saw me do there. Little clip. And this guy, after you get the retainer off, he just comes out. You got this, you've got an O-ring, and you've got a filter. And we'll replace that as well. Now this will allow us to get in here and, and clean where we couldn't clean before. We've got some carbon buildup that was held, up, held in by um, the bracket here that we couldn't access. So we can get in here now with the wire brush. And we can also get in with the wire brush along this side here. Now I'm going to go grab a pick and we'll pull out the retainers and the O-rings from this side. All right guys, so um, broke all the separate pieces off the regulator, right? So the retaining clip, the regulator, there's a little plastic sleeve, there's an O-ring that goes around the outer body, there's a small O-ring that goes around the tip, and then this is the filter. And now as far as the fuel injectors go, this is what they look like when they come out. I just took a couple of them out to show you. So you got the injectors, all this body here, there's an O-ring here, there's an O-ring there, and then there's the terminals. And to get them out, they can be pretty wedged in here after this many years. But if we look inside, I took two of them out so you can see it better. So you can see there's a place for you to put a small punch or a small screwdriver in the hole that's behind the two connectors, like here. So you can put this guy right there. And what I like to do is just grab a piece of wood, position this guy on the next one we want to do, which is this one, which has this red boundary here. And we just kind of push down on it. You can see it starts to move up. And once it starts to move a little bit, you can get on here while you pull down and you can pull up at the same time. Gonna make sure you stay in that little hole. It can be they can be in here really tight after this many decades. But it will come out. And that's how you get all these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove them all that same way. And that way we can get in here and we can we can clean up this body. You know, something else you can do, some of these on this side were really, really stuck. So I took a little bit of PB Pentrain Blaster, let it soak in there. Try to pull up a little bit on it by hand just to get it to get around the O-ring. Take our punch, put it in the same hole I mentioned before. And just give it a couple of whacks with the wood. That actually can work out a little better if it's really super stuck in there. The next thing that you're going to have trouble getting out are these seals around the O-rings for the fuel lines that come in. Uh, a couple of different small screwdrivers to very carefully work it out to this point where you see me at now and some PB blaster to the point where we can kind of grab it with a pair of pliers and we can work these guys out. Hopefully this one will come out as well, yep. And now inside, there are a couple of O-rings. So you can see there's a yellow one right there. And now we've got pretty much everything's disassembled. So now we can give this guy a thorough cleaning. If you didn't damage it, uh, getting this out of here. Now we got a bunch of carbon that we need to get off of here. So it's got like a rough finish, but um, if you're careful, you won't chip the body of this off and crack it. And that point you can reuse it. If for some reason that you can't reuse it, maybe it's already cracked, you notice it's damaged, maybe something broke down here, maybe something broke over here. This whole piece is replaceable and I'll put a part number uh, for this housing in the description for both the six cylinder and the eight cylinder. But at this point we do some final cleaning up and we're ready to install our new injectors. So guys, uh, stopped a little bit too soon on that previous clip. I need to come back here. So when we are working inside of this body, 
right here. Now you can see we're fully disassembled. I stopped a little bit too soon uh, and cut that off. We actually need to pull out past the yellow O-ring. We've got a small metal washer and then I said there were a couple. Here's the second one right here that's black. Similarly for the larger size we got yellow uh, washer and then black. Now once we get all those off then we're done. So now we've got this guy all cleaned out inside all ready to take the new O-rings. We've got all cleaned out here. Uh, we got a lot of that varnish off the sides. There you can still see pieces here and there, but you know nothing that really is going to interfere with reassembly or mounting. We've got this guy all ready to take the new pieces there. And we've got this guy all ready to take our new fuel injector assemblies. So let me uh, show you what those different parts are going to look like. So when we do the reassembly, one of the first parts we're going to be going with is 192-10686. And what this is going to be is a new fuel regulator assembly. So you can see we've got a, a new um, retaining bracket. We've got the new regulator. And you can see the design of the regulator is a little bit differently if we compare to our old one. We don't have this um, little piece at the end. This relief at the end isn't present on the new design. It just doesn't have that. But we can see we've got our black ring, we've got our blue O-ring which corresponds to this piece and this piece right on the very end. We've got our O-ring which corresponds to this piece, a filter. Inside the kit there's also a snap ring. This particular design doesn't use the snap ring. We're just going to be using the clamp ring and that's all it takes to install that piece. The other part we've got here is a AC Delco 217-451 or a GM 1711-3205. And what this is, is a rebuild kit for the body. So you can see we've got um, both a new plate for an eight and a six cylinder assembly. Uh, you know, we've got our yellow O-rings in here. We've got these plastic pieces in here. We've got a couple of new nuts in here. Fold this around. We've got our black O-rings. I'm going to show you somewhere in here. We've got these little washers that are hiding somewhere in here. There we go. Well, almost had him. Hold on a second. Well, you guys are going to have to trust me when we pop them open. we got a couple of those metal washers in here that we see here and here. So we have all the pieces we need to rebuild this um, body here. And then there's also the fuel injector themselves. Let me show you that. All right, we got our eight new injectors here. And those are going to be a AC Delco 217-265 or a GM 1709 1432. And inside the package, the way these should all come, I kind of one hand this one. All right, so there's the end of our injectors, all nice and good. And then your actual component that has the electrical piece should have one of these protective covers over it that I may or may not be able to get off one handed. Yeah, there it is. And there's our piece that goes into our body. So we'll be able to get organized here, clean off the table, and put all this stuff together. All right, guys, it's time to reassemble our fuel meter body. Now that we've got everything cleaned off, if we happen to get any dust, make one last attempt to remove that. The first thing that we are going to install is our fuel regulator assembly. So this guy will all come out together along with the retainers. And like I mentioned, our application uses this type of retainer. This type isn't used, so we'll end up discarding that. To ease the assembly on these O-rings, we're going to put some clean, fresh motor oil on them. So just around this guy here and this guy here. So we've got a new filter, so this whole series of things that we took off, a series of parts, right? We've got our body of our regulator, we've got our plastic ring, we've got our blue O-ring, we've got our black O-ring seal, and we've got our new filter. This guy's just going to slide right into here. Just like that. Alright, so we've got this guy just pushed in. There's a little dimple at the bottom. I don't know if it's significant, but try to keep that lined up because 
we used to have this relief braced on here that they don't use anymore so I'm not sure if that's important to have in that position but we're going to do it that way <clears throat> then we need to put this retaining clip on you can see there's like a, a beveled end and a round end we're going to run the round end along the back and we're going to run this kind of beveled piece along the actual re uh, regulator and just snaps on just like that and we're done so now we've got the regulator in position the next thing that we'll put in are our fuel line. Um, we'll be rebuild the O-ring piece for this. So that's going to call for opening up our kit. Let's see if I can uh, zoom this in a little bit. So we'll open up our kit. We'll dig out our eight-cylinder plate. We'll dig out our replacement nuts. Now these other black O-rings that we see in here, there's quite a few of them. I'll pull these all out just so you can see. If you were keeping your old fuel injectors, that's what these guys would be for. Right, you'd end up with several of these of the sizes necessary to do the top and the bottom of each of the injectors. All right, guys, so if you decide to rebuild the injectors, or reuse them, rather, um, if they're okay with these retainers so that the shroud around the poppet, nothing's broke off, and that you still got both of the clips, and the clips are still supple and functional, that they're going to safely hold the injector into the lower intake manifold, then you're going to want to at least rotate out these two o-rings and these are replaceable so we can get a tool in here to fish them out so there's the lower and then here's the upper whoops just got to work it all the way off out of its little groove and roll it down so we get those two O-rings off. And those two O-rings will be part of the kit that we have for doing this rebuild. But if this is damaged on top, then you're going to have to at least rebuild that part. And I'm going to show one of the ones we have over here that's broken off, right? So this guy here. So this one we wouldn't want to reuse because we've already lost a piece of the shroud. And so I, you can get a replacement from aftermarket of this poppet valve retaining clip piece. But you're going to have to dislodge the original one. And that is held in by this little guy here. Right? So you're just going to need to break this off. So there's that one. And then there's another one on this side. And probably the easiest way, and it's just a destructive thing, right? Because it's the only way to get the original one off. But after you pull those two pieces off, you can get this off of here and then clean this up, get the crud off of here. There's going to be some carbon buildup and you'll be able to replace the clip part with an aftermarket piece. And I'll put a link in the description on what those are. But that's just to show you how to get the old ones off. So you just have to get these little retaining clips. They're going to be brittle and there's just no way to salvage them. But if it's already got pieces broken, like this one had that one piece of the shroud missing, um, here's another one that has almost nothing left of the shroud, right? And so these are perfect candidates for this kind of a rebuild. When we do that approach, then we won't just replace the O-rings alone. So we'll take this guy off as well. And we'll take this guy off. At this time, I'm going to bring it over the top because now we have the shroud off, we can do that. And the other thing we're going to replace is this retaining ring. So this, we're just going to take a small flathead screwdriver. And we're going to get that off of there. And then if we look in the kit, we had leftover pieces that I mentioned, we'll find these parts. All right, so here's the larger O-ring. Here's the smaller O-ring. And then here's the retaining ring that goes on top. And so you would end up now being able to slide the O-ring on 
and the new retaining ring on and snap them into position and then be able to work the lower o-ring on and put an aftermarket poppet shroud on here and reuse this but since we're not reusing them those will go in there for something else all right and now we're going to sort between inlet and outlet these guys are all different sized so you want to make sure you get the right ones smaller and larger like so and then to put those in again we're just going to use a little bit of clean motor oil to lube up the bore of this put the first o-ring in and then we can take a socket we'll just use the same eight millimeter socket that we're going to use to tighten down the bottom plate we can push this guy in do the same thing with the black o-ring here the larger one we'll take our retainer or excuse me our ceiling washer put that in same on this side let's try that again get them in nice and even There we go. Same thing with this guy. Get him in nice and even. Then run the yellow O-ring in on both of them. Use the socket to lightly push them down. And then we'll take these retainers, these plastic retainers. We'll put them in and we'll push them down finger tight. Now we don't have to worry about getting them fully seated because when we put the lines in and we end up tightening down this guy, they'll seat themselves into position. As long as you've got it in to the point where you can't push it in anymore with your fingers. So that one went in a little bit more. That one went in a little bit more. At this point, we're done and we're ready to just kind of sit this guy on here and retain him with a couple of nuts just so he doesn't fall off. All right, now it's time to do the injectors. Same deal. We're going to uh, just lube up the bore here a little bit with clean motor oil. The difficulty we had getting these out is not the normal case. It shouldn't have been that difficult to get these out. They should just slide right in. Now we'll open up each injector package and we'll remove the protective cover and we're going to line up to make sure that we're getting these two pins in the right position to come through right so we see that on the inside that they're coming through and we're just going to push that in And we're just going to keep doing this for all eight of them. And we'll come back and we'll install the plate and torque that down. All right, guys, we've got seven of them in. We're doing number eight now, last one. It's a little faster just to lubricate him up right here directly. <coughs> Now to get them to actually seat in here, sometimes they'll go in by hand, sometimes they won't. You take something flat along the metal part of the injector to give yourself some more leverage to pop them in. At this point we can put our plate into position. We can take our two new nuts that the kit provided. Run these down with an eight millimeter. And then we're going to torque them to 27 inch pounds. As we torque this down, 
it'll seat the injectors that didn't get in all the way. So we don't have to worry about that. Similar to what we said about the fuel pipes on top with the fuel line retainers. Okay, that is it guys. We just rebuilt our central sequential fuel injection system. It's all ready to be reinstalled onto the bracket on the lower intake manifold and routed into the appropriate cylinders. Now, a little breeze cruising by right now. At least we got through the whole video before we got hit with the wind. But I hope this helps you out in putting this kind of system back together again and getting many more miles out of it. I hope the other stuff I showed you in the video can show you how to make this system as reliable as it should be. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. I'll try to help. If you found this useful or you learned something, please hit that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.